Hello and welcome back to TF3 and on this week's Football Explained, I'm over in Leipzig to sample some Red Bull branded football. RB Leipzig or Rasenballsport Leipzig were founded in 2009 after they bought the license of 5th division German side SSV Markenstadt which allowed them to gain a foothold in the German league system. There's been protests, pigs heads and away fans boycotting games at the Red Bull Arena. But why are RB Leipzig so hated? In order to compete within the Bundesliga you must adhere to the 50 plus 1 rule. The rule states in order to compete in the Bundesliga a club must hold the majority of its own voting right. This is designed to protect clubs from external influence from investors. Red Bull have got around this by installing 17 members. They are either employees of Red Bull or very closely associated to Red Bull to be official members of the club. It costs around 800 euros to be a member per season. In comparison to Borussia Dortmund over in West Germany, that's around 60 euros, so there's a big jump up there. But also it's an application process over in Leipzig, meaning that you pay the 800 euros but you can still be rejected. Obviously Red Bull keeping a lot of the control. Going back to why are RB Leipzig hated, they're hated because they're going against the traditions of German football. Traditionally German football is like Bayern Munich, it's Leverkusen, it's Wolfsburg, it's the big boys. And having a new guy in there really upsets that crowd, especially when they're bankrolled by someone like Red Bull and is seen as another part of their marketing wing in the company. But for me, I like Red Bull, I like what they're doing and here's why. First up of course it's got to be the football, as a football purist myself, I love attacking football, fast play, lots of crosses into the box and of course lots of goals. And that's exactly what Red Bull have brought to Leipzig, goals, entertainment and a whole lot of fun. Red Bull this season have set up in a 4-2-2-2, that switches to a 4-4-2 in defence, but when they're in attack that's where you see the magic. A very interesting system with the two strikers like to split wide, they like to run the channels and get in behind the opponent. But that opens up space for the two attacking midfielders to move inside into that danger zone and create. One player that's shone this season, of course, is Emil Feuchberg. The Swedish international has really taken his game to the next level in the Bundesliga. He was at Werder Bremen the season before and did perform well, but in a creative sense, he's been fantastic. He reached eight assists in the Bundesliga this year, but what Feuchberg is, is the heartbeat of this side. As the forwards vacate the space, Feuchberg comes inside and becomes a playmaker. Sometimes RB Leipzig look like they're playing a 4-3-1-2, with Emil Feuchberg as an attacking midfielder behind the two forwards. He's been fantastic with his delivery from wide areas, but also those through balls into the feet of the strikers. Another thing, great from range. A very exciting young talent. If we're talking about exciting talent, you can't look further than Timo Werner. The young German has scored 11 goals in the Bundesliga this season. In terms of players under 21 in Europe's top five leagues, you can only look at Deli Alli, who's scored more. Another very good striker. What I love about Timo Werner is his work rate. Constantly stretching defenders, but also giving them no time on the ball. And that is the next reason why Leipzig are so good to watch. Their press is fantastic. In recent years, we've seen Dortmund, we've seen Barcelona press so furiously, but this is another level. If Borussia Dortmund used to play a heavy amount of football under Jurgen Klopp, Red Bull Leipzig are pretty much listening to goth music. They are so aggressive with their press. They pretty much press in a 4-2-4 shape, with the two forwards being joined by the two wide players and really pressing the opposition deep in their half. Leipzig also play with a higher line to close the space down in between the forwards and the back four, but also they're very, very narrow, with the space in between the two wide forwards quite short. This gives Red Bull a great avenue to turn the ball over in the opposition's half and get on the counter-attack. One player that's shown in a defensive sense this season is Diego Demi. He's played a really aggressive role in central midfield. He's the guy that's winning the ball back. If you're looking at tackles plus interceptions in the opposition's half, no player in the Bundesliga has won the ball back more than Diego Demi. A brilliant, aggressive central midfielder. And if that's not exciting enough for you, the goals, the creativity, the pressing you've got in the BK 8 
He's going to be one of the best players in the world. He's got a mixture of Kante's ability to win the ball back, his quick feet, his speed, but also the technical ability that Emil Forsberg possesses with his forward passing, his interplay and his eye for his goal. He scored a number of brilliant goals from outside the area in his career and is a real threat. Against Eintracht Frankfurt, he was my man of the match and this is what I thought about his performance. So the game has just finished, Eintracht Frankfurt versus RB Leipzig, they finished three goals to nil and the Beal case absolutely key to the performance, was so good drifting on the, off that left hand side, moving into very interesting positions, dropping back into central midfield, going behind the strikers or pushing onto that back line, but whenever he was on the ball, so difficult to knock off, you know, go to the, the Timo Werner goal, the free kick, a great burst of pace from Keita, but bustling past about two players, then getting brought down, then putting a fantastic ball into the box, very, very impressed by him, and again, dropping back to central midfield and pretty much running the game from there. So my man of the match, again, Nabil Keita in the uh, RB Leipzig game versus Eintracht Frankfurt. Anyway, back to the studio. And that is why Red Bull play one of the best brands of football currently in Europe. And that is why I'm a bit of a fan of those guys. Another massive positive of the project in Leipzig for me is youth development. Instead of going out there and being the nouveau rich giants like PSG, like Manchester City and like Chelsea going signing the superstars, RB Leipzig have taken a slightly different approach. Instead of getting these players that are already at the peak of their game, they're signing young, talented, exciting talent and pushing them forward to develop them into world-class talent. The names absolutely come out. We've got Oliver Burke signed from Nottingham Forest, Nabil Keita, Timo Werner from Stuttgart, uh, Neil Forsberg signed from Sweden. All very positive steps to build a club instead of just building a flash, a team, you know, something that isn't going to be have a great longevity to it. And that's why I feel that they're doing the right thing in terms of where they're spending their money. In terms of the local economy, Red Bull again are bringing big positives to the local area. They've spent 65 million euros on developing their training and youth facilities over the last five seasons. In an economic sense, that makes a lot of sense. Firstly, it's going to provide more jobs to locals in Leipzig. That means more, play more people are going to get work, thus being able to spend more money inside, in the bars, in the restaurants, and thus providing more work for other people. Other people are going to be waiters, other people are going to be chefs, and wholly that's going to be positive for the city of Leipzig. But in terms of what Ralph Renlacher wants to do in the next five seasons, he wants to have an entire team of players that are developed at the academy. And for me, that is the right way to go if you want to be a football club. And that's why I'm fully behind the project at Red Bull. It's good for the community, it's good for the local people, but also it's good for the young players coming through both at the Red Bull Academy and in the first team, playing a very proactive, aggressive, exciting style of football. Anyway, I've been Statman Dave on the front three once again. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you are new to the front three. See you later.